My name is Anthony Sequera. I'm a full-time instructor with CBT Nuggets, and I am thrilled that you are joining me for this look at the exciting career choice of a desktop support technician in the field of information technology. I'm so passionate about this career category because it's exactly how I got my start. It was the early 90s, I was here in Tampa, Florida, and my first real job was with IBM, and I was a desktop support technician for their internal employees. I took calls from people all over the world with a variety of hardware and software problems, and I was so incredibly challenged and learned so much during this time that it really helped me launch my career even further. Don't believe me? Well, look at a picture of me from back then. I've clearly come a long way. In this course, I plan to give you all of the information that you would need to really jumpstart your career in desktop support. And in this particular nugget, I'm really going to make sure that you can describe some common tasks of the desktop support technician. In a future video, we'll look specifically at some very, very precise job roles, but for right now, let's just get a sense for this. Here is just a very brief list of potential tasks that we might be doing in the world of desktop support. At IBM, I found myself troubleshooting desktops, coordinating with vendors like Microsoft and Adobe to ensure that the operating system was running the applications properly, troubleshooting hardware, making sure that users could log in to the enterprise network successfully, and troubleshooting basic network components. While I was doing all of this, I was researching common problems in our internal database system, and of course making entries in that system for the new trouble tickets that I was encountering each day and solving. Now, if it's true that variety is the spice of life, you'll have a very spicy career in desktop support because here I'm showing you just some of the desktop operating systems that are common today. Believe it or not, Windows 7 is still out there in droves. It was such a great, stable, awesome Microsoft operating system that many smaller organizations have held on to it. There's Windows 8.1, which many now view as just a stepping stone to the ultimate Windows edition, and that is Windows 10. I say the ultimate because Microsoft claims that this is the very last desktop operating system that they're gonna create. There will be no Windows 11 or Windows 12. Instead, what they'll do is via the internet, send new features to Windows 10 via the Windows Update feature. Maybe you'll be supporting desktops that offer the latest Mac operating system, Mojave. It's a beautiful, stable, high-performance operating system that is a favorite of those in the design fields. And I've also noticed a programmer or two that loves to operate in this latest Mac OS. Speaking of developers, one of their faves is the Ubuntu desktop. This is open source, which means it's free. Yay! We can download it and hopefully donate to the great folks at Ubuntu for this Linux-based operating system. But for a home user that just wants a nice, simple operating system on maybe an older laptop, Ubuntu might just do the trick. More and more, the Chrome operating system is seeing proliferation, so you might even be supporting this very stripped-down, primarily browser-based OS. So even in this introduction, we get a sense that with desktop support, we're going to have a tremendous amount of variety. We're going to be constantly learning and building our skill sets, and we're going to not only enjoy the challenges that present themselves, but once again, really learn from those challenges. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.